and she's like, so what are you do? And I said, in March. And she looks at my belly and she's like, really? Are you having twins? <laughs> and I was like, of my pregnancy. We reached viability this week. That is so exciting. That is, we reached the earliest point where baby could survive outside the womb, and we still want her to cook a lot longer. <laughs> but it is it does give me so much peace of mind to know that if something crazy were to happen, like she most likely will be okay from this point on. We do have really good medical care near our house, so that is comforting to me, especially after everything that went on in the first trimester with the hematoma and all of the scare of all of that and them telling me that I was at a higher risk for preterm labor, which they said I'm not now because my hematoma moved out of the way like I talked about in the last vlog. Um, but I think I've still just, because of all that, I've still just had more fears about that this time in this pregnancy than last pregnancy. I just like am worrying about that a little more and I'm trying not to worry too much. I, I do worry about things but like I'm not the type that will just like sit and worry over things a whole lot <laughs> but it is worrying me a little bit. It is good to know that it's that preterm labor is unlikely to happen but if it were she would probably be okay from this point on so that is a lot of peace of mind for me this week. As for the pregnancy for the last two weeks, um, things have been going pretty well, pretty uneventful. Um, I've definitely had lower energy this last week or so and just kind of like low motivation. It's like, oh, I have to just like will myself to like get through the day. I mean, it's not nearly as bad as it was in the first trimester, not even can't even compare it to that, but I am feeling just a little like, ah, oh, you know, it's that time of year, it's getting dark really early, and you know, it's easy to just kind of like feel like you're slogging through your days a little bit, um, and just kind of have that low energy. I know I talked about in one of my early videos about the kinds of cosmetics and stuff that I use, and I think I should probably throw in now one that I've added to my little regimen is, um, using coconut oil, just straight up organic coconut oil um, on my belly. And I actually use that as um, a whole body lotion, actually. I use the big, big old tub of coconut oil that you can get from Costco. It's actually an awesome thing that you can get from Costco. Um, it's like 20 bucks or something for this big old tub of coconut oil and it, it lasts for a really long time. So. Um, yeah, and we use it in cooking, and I use it on my belly, <laughs> and so, and stuff is awesome. I use it for diaper rashes on Alex, too. Let me tell you, if you need a natural remedy for diaper rashes, coconut oil really is awesome. Um, unless it's, like, a really bad one, then I'll use, like, butt paste or something, but just for, like, daily use, coconut oil is amazing stuff, and it smells so nice, and it makes your skin so soft, and <laughs> I love it. But talking about skin and hair and nails and that kind of thing, I definitely have been noticing, as a lot of people do in pregnancy, my hair and my nails have been growing thicker and stronger, <laughs> and that definitely happened in my last pregnancy, too. And then after I was pregnant before, you know, all my hair fell out, like, that's pretty normal. And my nails got a little bit more brittle again, but now they are tough and strong again. And my hair is really thick, and I feel like all that hair that I did lose from the last pregnancy is, like, all growing back. So that's, that's nice. I have been feeling a lot of movement. Oh my goodness. Um, 
I still wouldn't characterize baby girl as like a crazy active baby, but I am feeling her move a lot. I'm not like feeling her doing somersaults or anything, but I am feeling her very regularly throughout the day now, and I'm almost getting to the point where I can tell like, oh, that was a foot versus a hand, just by, you know, the strength of the, the kick or the punch. You can kind of tell um, almost which position she's in um, just by where she's kicking. It's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet she's not that big yet. I mean, when I was pregnant with Alex, I could really tell which position he was in. Um, like he was always head down and facing to the right and he always kicked my left ribs <laughs> but yeah with baby girl I'm always feeling I think I'm always feeling her feet on my lower right and her hands on my like upper left so it's almost like she's kind of she might be breech right now um, which I guess that would kind of be an indicator of that um, but I know that can totally change over time we have a lot of time left I've also been noticing that it's been making me uneasy a little bit this last week or two. Um, my uterus has been contracting a lot, and I think it's just Brax Braxton Hicks, but I talked to my midwife about it, and she said, well, you don't want, want to be having regular Braxton Hicks at this point. It's still pretty early. Um, she says it's normal to have your, your uterus contracting, um, but if it gets to be regular, like, you know, every five to ten minutes, like, that can be a sign of preterm labor, um, and if it's accompanied with back pain and like pain down your legs and, and your bum, that kind of thing, um, that I'm supposed to call her, but it hasn't really been anything like that. So I think I'm okay. Um, but it does kind of feel crampy sometimes, like almost like period cramps, but, um, but just kind of mild. And that just, <laughs> like I said before, like with my, this worry that I have about preterm labor, I think I'm just kind of like hyper aware. I'm like, oh, is, you know, is that a sign? Is this something I should worry about? Should I be paying attention to this? Should I be paying attention to that? Um, it's probably fine because it's so subtle and I haven't been having any of the like telltale signs of preterm labor. So it's probably fine, but I have been noticing that a lot more the last week or two. Um, yeah, so speaking of my midwife, I did have another appointment last week with another midwife actually. The main midwife that I that is like the head of the birth center that I'm going to, she's actually taking like a, a month or two vacation. Um, I guess she's just been like really busy and just did like 85 births like in the last month or two or something like that. So she, you know, was just a little burned out and I guess she's taking a little bit of a break. And um, the lady who is um, temporarily taking over for her was actually her teacher back in the day. So this lady is an older lady um, and she was actually the mentor for my current main midwife. And so I think that's kind of cool that she's been around for so long and she really knows what she's doing. And I guess this lady is starting her own birth center in another part of the region. So, um, so that was cool. Um, I just love the midwife experience. Like I really always feel so cared for. Um, I had a lot of questions this last time just about my worries about the preterm labor and everything and um, just wanting to discuss like some of the complications that I had during labor last time and just talking through that with her and like you know why that's giving me so, a little bit of anxiety. I just so appreciated that she took like almost an hour to just talk with me <laughs> um, and that's what I just love about the midwife experience they treat you like a person <laughs> um, not like a piece of meat they're not just trying to crank you through crank all the patients through um, get as many in as they can during the day you know um, and that's one thing I really like about midwifery care is just it's so holistic and they really um, you know look at you as a whole person and your pregnancy and all of its all the aspects, you know, the mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of a pregnancy, and um, I just really appreciate that about midwife care, so loving my midwife team. So let's talk about my pillow situation. <laughs> As Bill puts it, my fortress of pillitude <laughs> is back in full force now. Um, for the first half of the pregnancy, I was just sleeping with like a body pillow on one side, just like a king-size pillow on the other side, and that was it. Um, but now I've upped the ante. On top of my body pillow I've added another king size pillow and then on the other side I put another king size pillow on top of that. So I have my 
full-blown fortress of Pilatoon back in full swing now. <laughs> and I'm really glad that I finally, you know, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just get by without making it as crazy as I did last time. But no, <laughs> my hip pain was actually my motivation is because, um, you know, I've mentioned the last few vlogs that I've been really getting this like sciatic hip pain. And um, I find that when I lie on my side, um, I mean, this is just like knowledge that I learned from being a massage therapist and I, my specialty is actually doing pregnancy massage, so I'm really hyper aware of ergonomics and keeping all of the joints aligned in the body and that kind of thing. Um, and just learning that like when you are bolstering up a pregnant woman, her knee, when she's lying sideways, her knee should be level with her hip. <laughs> um, otherwise it can contribute to that hip pain. Um, it puts that strain on those um, rotator muscles in the hip. And so um, I was like, you know, I am a massage therapist. I really should be practicing what I preach here. <laughs> and so I upped the ante and gave myself the full fortress again. And I, it really helps to just having that knee, my knee elevated a little higher at night, just so it's level with my hip. Um, so it's not like hanging down like that. Um, it really does make a difference in my comfort at night. I just feel like I am sleeping a lot better. Um, and I'm still getting the hip pain, but it's not nearly as bad. I've, I feel like I don't wake up in quite as much pain as I was before. Once or twice a week, I do still have to have Bill massage that muscle. And he's gotten really good at just like, he knows exactly where it is now. And he just homes right in on it and, <laughs> um, and just like tackles that muscle. So, and that really helps too. So let's have a little talk about things that people say to you when you're pregnant. <laughs> oh my goodness. The thing that's bringing this up is I actually went um, shopping at Target with one of my friends the other week and there was this lady there that, I don't know, maybe she was in her, I don't know, 60s or something. And she, she starts talking to us. She's like, oh, congratulations, you guys are pregnant because my friend is pregnant too. And, um, and she's like, so what do you do? And I said, in March. And she looks at my belly and she's like, really? Are you having twins? <laughs> and I was like, uh. <laughs> I was tactful with her. I'm so bad at coming up with like comebacks to people when they say stupid things to you in public. I mean, especially when it's complete strangers, but just like, yeah, yeah, you know, second baby pops out a lot more, like, which is true. Like, yes, my belly is really big, but oh my gosh, the things that people think that they can say to you when you're pregnant. So, thankfully, I really do feel this, this time around. Um, I've developed a much thicker skin now than I had when I was pregnant the first time, because I, I remember getting comments like that when, when I was pregnant the first time too. And, um, and I remember there were a few times when I went home and cried. <laughs> um, but this time I, you know, I feel like I've gotten pretty good just like brushing it off. Like it annoys me, but it's not like, it, it doesn't like cut me to the core like it did before, you know? I actually compiled a little list of things that people have actually said to me in my last pregnancy and this pregnancy. Let me put them right here. things that people have said to me while pregnant. I actually made a Facebook post about it and so many of my friends were so supportive and they were like, what? Who thinks they can say things like that to pregnant people? It's like, you know, people, when they see a pregnant person, there's like this fascination and I understand that like most of the time people really do have good intentions and they're just like intrigued by the pregnant body, you know, it's just so interesting. And, um, you know, people are just kind of amazed by it and how big your belly gets and just what's going on with that. And, um, and I think people have good intentions. They're not trying to be mean and malicious, but um, I think that, you know, people also don't really think about, these are not the kinds of things I would say to somebody who's not pregnant. Like people feel like they have this free pass to say things like that when you're pregnant. But people were pointing out like, usually it's the people who have never been pregnant before who say things like that. And I was like, that's really true. With the exception of the lady at Target. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like I have noticed that like all of my friends who have been pregnant before never ever say anything like that because they've all been in that boat before and I've had those comments said to them like both for either belly being too big or belly being too small even and so everybody concurred that like the only thing that you should say to a pregnant woman in her appearance is that she looks beautiful <laughs> and so I was like yes I agree with that statement but anyway speaking of Target I actually made one little impulse buy when I was there. I was buying some gifts for a couple baby showers that I'm going to. Um, and let me tell you, I am getting excited about little girl clothes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and the thing about having a little girl is I, I'm the kind of person that I don't like pink. Like I don't like dis, I don't dislike pink. I have pink clothes and stuff. Like it's like pink in general doesn't bother me, but like the, when it's like when you walk into a little girl section of the store and there's just like this like massive pink and like, like the Barbie shade of pink, you know, and like, there's like these leopard prints and sparkles and cartoon characters and just like, ugh, I really don't like that stuff. And I like girly stuff too. I just don't like the like everything pink. <laughs> when I was at Target, I actually saw this. Let me show you. I saw this little outfit and oh my gosh, isn't this adorable? I, this is like the one impulse buy that I've gotten for this pregnancy <laughs> and you know I mostly try to get everything used and everything but um, and I actually have I have some very sweet friends that have already given me like two big stuffed bags full of girl clothes which is awesome and I am so grateful for that um, but like looking through them it was like all pink I couldn't find any outfit in there that wasn't pink and I was like oh my gosh like I'm okay with it, with some pink you know but I don't want it to be all pink and so I was so excited when I saw this because like this is so cute it's girly and even a little bit sparkly but like this shade of green I just oh I love it and look at these cute little leggings that go with them <sighs> I'm getting excited about the little girl clothes I'm this outfit I was just like oh this seals the deal for me. I'm so excited to be having a girl. <laughs> anyway, but on a more serious note, um, I was just thinking about how like when I was pregnant with Alex, I spent so much time like reflecting on my pregnancy and journaling and just like, you know, thinking about baby and me and just like praying for baby and just like spending a lot of time um, just focusing on him, you know, when I was pregnant with him. And I, you know, and I've, I've heard other mommy vloggers say the same thing, but it's like the, the second time you're pregnant or the third time or whatever, um, it is not the same because you're just so busy. I mean, when you are occupied with taking care of a toddler, you just don't have the same kind of time you had before to sit and meditate on your pregnancy like you did before, you know? Um, and I was realizing like, oh my gosh, this pregnancy is just starting to fly by. Like I like today I'm 24 and a half weeks pregnant. And like, <laughs> that means I'm like just about six months pregnant. That means that I'm like two thirds of the way through this pregnancy. Like, oh my gosh, like I had this epiphany the other day, like, oh my God, we're going to have another baby in our lives <laughs> like just thinking about how much our lives changed when Alex arrived I'm like oh it's gonna change again and you know I think you know it won't be as big of a shock as it was the first time around but it is going to be a big change having this little girl in our lives and I am so excited for that and you know I was just thinking like I really do need to like stop I can't do it as much as I did you know the first pregnancy but I was thinking I really do need to like stop and just really appreciate the little miracle that's happening inside me right now that there's this baby girl growing and just thinking about like just the whole first half of this pregnancy and how we were so worried about her and wanting her to pull through and she did and that is just such a blessing that she's a little girl and that we get one of each we get a little boy and a little girl which I am just so happy about and um, and just taking a little time to, you know, to focus on her and talk to her and pray for her and that kind of thing. So I know I can't do it as much as I did last time, but it, I just had this realization that I really need to slow down and take some time for her like that, you know. 
Um, so I'm really trying to focus on that a little bit more this week. Just as like a separate non-pregnancy thing, we tried going to church again this week. Um, we found a church that, you know, we, this seems like it's probably going to be a pretty good fit for us. Um, it's definitely a lot bigger than our last church. It has four services, whereas our last church was small and like met in the cafeteria of a school. <laughs> and um, this one has their own building. They have like a whole building for the nursery and they have four services. Um, which, you know, which is nice that they have all those programs for the kids and everything. Um, and we really liked the sermons we were hearing. We'd listened to some online before we went and everything. Um, and they seem to be really good at being the hands and feet of Jesus, so to speak. Um, and they really are good about missions and just like getting out in the community and helping people. And I really just think that that that's what Christ is about, is just like really hands-on, changing the world in a very tangible way. Um, and we really like that about them. So we've gone to this church a couple times now, but oh my gosh, just in the last month or two, Alex has developed separation anxiety. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, well, speaking of which, well, hello, sir. Did you come to make a little appearance? Hi guys, my name. <laughs> you say hi guys. <gasps> Look who it is. Can you say hi? The little man came up and said hi just at the right time. Anyway, um, so yeah, he, this little guy here yeah. has really been developing separation anxiety, I see, I see and he's fine if if he's a, if we're in an unfamiliar place yeah. that's like totally unfamiliar to him, unfamiliar to us even. He's totally fine as long as one of us is with him. He's totally fine. Or if he's like in a familiar place, like, but with somebody a little more unfamiliar, um, like he's okay with that. Um, but if you have like unfamiliar place and unfamiliar people and it's like big and like crazy and lots of toddlers running around and everything, he freaked out. Oh my gosh. Um, we basically couldn't get anything out of the service. They have this uh, method for, you know, if baby if your baby is crying for more than five minutes, they they have a little number on their sticker that they're wearing for the day, and they will flash your number up on the screen if they need you to come to the nursery. And we knew this happened the last time we took him, and so to get him used to it, like I stayed with him while Bill went to the first part of the service, and then kind of eased my way out. And even then, when I left, I heard him screaming as I was walking down the hall. I was like, oh, just breathe. Like we have to go through this. He has to learn. Um, but then our little number came up, so then I went back and, you know, ran some books with him, played with him for a little bit, and, and then left again, and he started screaming again. Five minutes later, his number comes up on the screen again. Bill goes that time, and so I can enjoy a little bit of the service. And then he comes back about ten minutes later, and he's like, Alex is not happy. <laughs> I guess he was screaming again when he left. And so I went back again and I basically just took him out of the nursery because he was just so worked up. He was so unhappy and like, and it's so unlike him too because this kid, he's a really happy little guy. He is so chill all the time. And so like, I mean, he has his moments, you know, but like, it's unlike him to like scream like that for an extended period of time. It's very unlike him. So it was making me feel terrible. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I feel like a terrible parent. Um, but like he, you know, I really felt bad for him because it would really seem like traumatic for him. Like, I know he's not faking it because he's not like that most of the time. And so we were just thinking like, oh, that was such a stressful experience. Like it's almost not even worth it for us to go to church right now. Like if that's going to be the experience we have every time, it's like we can barely hear the, the sermon as it is. I mean, and it's broken because Bill and I were getting up and leaving, you know, several times throughout. <laughs> and so um, we're just like, oh man. So like, tell me you guys, like, if you are churchgoers, like, what do you do with your toddlers that have separation anxiety? How do you deal with that? Like, we're really having a challenge with this because it's like, we are, we're in a new, in a new town since we moved here this summer and we're trying to like build community and church is one of the ways that we really do that. But it's really a struggle to do that when we can, when we're just focusing on our unhappy no. toddler the whole time, you know, and start to enjoy the sermon, let alone like, build community with people and get to know people. So we're thinking, I don't know, maybe we'll join a small group or something and just do that for a little while until this phase passes with him. Like, 
we know it's just a phase and he will grow out of it but like right now it is such a challenge and it's like oh I feel this dilemma about it because it's like I am craving going to church I just have this like spiritual craving I need to go but yeah it's just like so hard to get something out of it if you know when we're going through this phase and so I don't know like tell me in the comments below if you guys are churchgoers like and you have toddlers, how have you dealt with this? I'm really curious to know. We love this little Hi. munchkin nonetheless. Yes, Hi. we do. We love him so much. And we know this is just a phase, isn't it? Hi. Yeah, you just love your mama and daddy that much, don't you? Yes. So, anyway, yeah, so just tell me your experience and how you guys deal with it. So anyway, that's it for this week, you guys. You probably saw that I was just cranking out a lot of videos this last week. I um, had recorded, you know, my whole series on food, and if you haven't checked out our whole diet series and um, how we eat a traditional real food diet and why we do so, um, how it healed our fertility problems and some other health problems we had, be sure to check that out. I will link that below. Um, so yeah, this last week I've just been like, a video editing machine <laughs> like I have just been cranking those puppies out <laughs> so anyway I was just wanting to get a lot done before Thanksgiving um, we're gonna be out of town for the long weekend and um, so I'm gonna be on a little bit of a hiatus for um, that time we're down there actually we're hoping to be to buy a new car I know I mentioned that a few vlog, vlogs back as well that we are going to try and buy a Mazda 5 um, and so if that works out, there's one in particular that we're hoping to buy used while we were down in Portland. So when if we end up buying that, like I will definitely do a review on that car when we get back. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's it for this week and let me do a quick belly shot for you guys. All right, here's the belly at week 24. And from the side. And the other side, there it is. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. That's right. Alex says happy Thanksgiving, and we all say happy Thanksgiving to you. Hope you have a wonderful holiday. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Alex, can you say bye-bye, YouTube? Bye-bye, <laughs> That's right. See you later, guys.